an acorn. <gasps> you're both obviously playing children, but you're playing a really little child, practically <laughs> a toddler. What's that like? It's like May's voice is very much like up here. She's like, Satsuki! It's as much, it's, it's a really interesting tone of voice. Here is a picture of May as a clown. What's it bringing, do you think, to the audiences? The original piece, which is very, very Japanese, and being able to honour that, but also bring uh, puppetry and theatre making and stuff like that from uh, the British theatre, bringing that together has been really, really wonderful. <laughs> This is our backstage puppet workshop where we're still building and finishing and repairing puppets as we move towards opening night. So you're showing me chickens. I want to see Totoro. <laughs> right, well, you'll see chickens for now. <laughs> we're still keeping Totoro under wraps so that people can find the surprise of him when they come see the show. Presumably, Studio Ghibli are very protective of their film. I would keep in touch with the Japanese as I went, and they're very specific about Totoro's eyes, need to, the distance between his eyes and the shape of his head and how that works. Because once you come into a three-dimensional world, it's very different than a 2D world and how that actually shows up. Um, they, they have their opinions, and I want to make sure that they're happy. When you first announced that you were staging this, mm. what was your reaction? It was huge. So we broke all box office records at the Barbican when we went on sale. Um, it's a, you know, that film is iconic, isn't it? And got a huge, huge fan base. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, there was a huge reaction. And I guess that is the pressure, isn't it? Because there's such a big expectation. Yeah! <laughs>